Jim, that's a good looking rifle you've got there. That's the M40A5 built by Tactical Rifles? Uh, yes, it is. Um, it's a 308. I had it built about five years ago uh, from Tactical Rifles, and it's uh, an absolute tag driver. It shoots uh, very remarkably. Now, you just com recently competed in a, uh, a military and law enforcement sniper competition. Uh, you used that rifle? I, I did. Uh, this is my primary rifle. Uh, I do almost everything with it. I hunt with it. I shoot competitions with it. I recreational shoot with it. Fantastic. Now, uh, is that, does that live up to the half MOA guarantee? Uh, this rifle actually uh, has never shot a half minute. It's never shot that bad. It's never shot that big, huh? That's right. <laughs> now, you obviously have a lot of strong opinions about what it takes to have a good, solid quality uh, bolt action gun. What do you look for? If, if you had the perfect gun, you said, you know, I'm, I'm going to design the perfect bolt action rifle, what would you put on it? What features would you use? Well, uh, the things I look for a lot. Um, is the solid action, uh, and there's two forms of actions that they use to build their guns on. This is, happens to be a Remington 700 action. Okay. But they do have a new uh, stainless steel action that is their proprietary exactly. action. Exactly, that's awesome. Um, that is uh, an upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, but this action is a 700 action. Um, it has been hand, hand laid, and it is as smooth as uh, silk. Now, what can you t like if a, if a guy were to pick up a rifle, a guy were to go into a gun shop and pick up a rifle, open the bolt, and it doesn't come out. It doesn't. It, it drags. It, what does that tell you about the gun right there? Well, basically, it tells me that it was it was made too quickly. You know, this thing was mass produced. It was put on a machine. It was run through, and no one individual picked that rifle up, worked the bolt, to see if it actually worked properly. Okay. As as far now, now this. This particular gun has a break on that. It has a muzzle break on the end. Is, Correct. is that something that you would use just for competitions, or would you use that for dedicated, uh, you know, long-range precision marksmen? What, what would the, the advantage be of putting that on there? The biggest advantage for me uh, that I use the brakes for is muzzle reduction. Um, this rifle is a bit heavy. It's about 17 pounds, and with this break on it, um, looking through my Leopold scope with the TMR, it's got the broken center crosshair. Uh, off a of bipod, I can actually see a hole open underneath my reticle. When I you can spot your hits. own hits with that. You can spot that. your own hits. Uh, and it, you can basically re-engage your target as fast as you can manipulate the bolt. So there's no, follow, there's no uh, fighting for the follow-up. Now, as far as magnification power on, an, on a, an optic goes, you know, if some guy, let's say you've got a guy at home and he never plans on shooting beyond 300 yards, d does that guy really need a, a 20 magnification scope? <clears throat> Not at all. Uh, the basic hunter uh, that's going to be a 300 meter and in, uh, 300 yards or in shooter, uh, they can get away with a 1 to 4 power, 1 to 5 power. Uh, and it's, it's not going to hinder them. Um, a lot of uh, law enforcement guys really like a high power so they can get an absolute positive identification of their targets. Um, and then, of course, long range shooters to see more of their target at a longer range. So really, the optic that you pick for your rifle is going to be very user specific and uh, mission specific. Okay. When you pop open the cap there and we look at the objective lens, how important is objective lens size toward uh, light gathering? Uh, there's a lot of myths on that actually. Um, the larger the opt uh, objective lens is, basically gives you a bigger field of view. Um, any scope has a certain amount of light transition and it depends on what type of light it actually transmits through your scope that mm -hmm. your eye can read. Uh, a lot of manufacturers will tell you that they have a 100% light transmission. Well, every scope transmits light 100% because the light comes through it. It's the type of light that your eye can actually pick up on is what you're trying to transmit. Uh, and generally speaking, uh, with most scopes, uh, a one inch tube uh, will give you all of that. Uh, what you gain in uh, the 30 millimeter tube with a larger objective lens is you get a larger field of view and you get more uh, traverse for your crosshairs. So the difference between a one inch tube and a 30 millimeter tube, it's not really the light transmission, it's, it's more the adjustability of it. That's yeah. correct. Okay, that's fantastic. Now, now for a crosshair, you mentioned earlier that you like to use an open crosshair so you can actually see the target itself. Um, I've used a lot of different uh, reticles and the TMR reticle that Leopold's building right now, the center of the crosshair is actually missing mm -hmm. and it's about the diameter of an actual cart, you know, an actual bullet. Uh, and what that allows you is to see exactly uh, where you're going to shoot. I mean, this rifle is precise enough at 100 yards, um, I want to see exactly where my bullet's going. 
Um, so the center of the X, the essentially. The absolute center of the X. So I have a target from yesterday, actually. Can you show and, the audience? Uh, sure. It's right over here. Let's go right here. So uh, this is a 100-meter cold bore target fired uh, during competition. And you can see um, there's a 1, a 308 hole, and a 0. And that was the first round fired of the day through this rifle. And now th this is actually a target they use for the competition. So your first shot's got to go between the two little girls? That's correct. What, what's up with this guy right here? Uh, that was an inferior firearm. An inferior firearm? All right, fantastic. But this, this is the shot that you took a cold bore with that rifle right there. That's correct. Right between the two little girls? Yep. Perfectly safe. Fantastic. Well, Jim, thank you for uh, taking some time with us today. I really appreciate it. Sure. And uh, thank you for your service to our nation. Thanks. Appreciate it.